I was there and I was supposed to do a bit of study work or I was supposed to tidy the office. And then I said, you know what? I just message you. <laughs> and that's what happened. So well, it, was, it was great timing. I went for a run this morning and mm. I just got back and uh, I was just sort of considering what to do. And then you messaged. Perfect. That's, that's perfect then. That's perfect. Yeah, speaking of running, I got, I've got i been avoiding the scales just for a while now, even though I know it's, you know, I can feel it like. <laughs> anyway, I got on this morning, so. Yeah, was it good news, bad news? No, it's, but it's been a year, so it's exactly what you would expect if you're avoiding okay. something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sherlock. Sure and where do you go running? So I'm in Brixton in London. Okay. So I just go around, uh, I go to Dulwich, which is about, it's about a five mile loop. Um, kind of avoiding the parks lately because the parks are just full of people. So right. that's not good. Yeah. But it's a really nice run up through mm -hmm. Dulwich. Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised that the parks are full. Is it just people yeah. doing their own thing or what's happening? Yeah, just just getting on with their day, taking their kids, going for a walk. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't so bad today, but it's been pretty, pretty busy. Okay. Yeah. And is it on lockdown where you are? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think they were talking about tier five. I don't really know what that is. I guess it's more like the first lockdown. Um, I just generally avoid people, you know, go for a run. It's pretty much like life before lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great strategy. I think that's, a, um, I think that's a strategy that is well worth, um, yeah. Because you yeah. know this, you know that Facebook, I saw Antonia putting up something about coming off Facebook and I've been in that zone for the last five days, but then, you know, the flip side of it is you get to chat with uh, people like you as of, you know, it just happens that way, but there's a, so much muck and shit. And then the fact that they've kind of killed free speech in yeah. recent mo movements. Yeah, it's quite interesting. I really like Antonia. I've had a couple of chats, lovely chats with her. Um, I don't know. I use Facebook just like you said, just to contact, just to see friends, keep up with friends. I filter out pretty much all news. Um, I don't really use it as a as a place to to talk about anything. I've, I can talk about that with my friends or message or Zoom. So I see it a little bit like um, a bar or a club or pretty much anywhere that you might go where there, you know, you can't walk into your, into a local bar and say anything. You can't just start spouting off. They'll kick you out. Yeah. And face, Facebook is a privately owned environment, but I guess people feel that it's it, it should be more free. But um, I, I saw a program the other day. Uh, what was it called? Social Dilemma, maybe. And mm. it was talking about how how on Facebook we are the product. So we sort of, you know, it's a it's a it's a give and take thing. We uh, we go there to because it's useful, but then we kind of complain when it's not exactly how we want it. I, I just you know, just is yeah. what it is. No, yeah. I really like that way because I have kind of been. I like what you're saying because I grapple with the idea of this a uh, couple of people deciding what what's allowed and what's not allowed. But that's a good way to look at it because you go into a bar and you shout your head off. It's you, you're pissing yeah, off everybody like, else, you know. Get out. <laughs> get out of the bar and go and shout on your own. Then why do you need an audience to shout? No, I like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I've no interest in your man, uh, Trump, Trumpy. I've no interest in him, but I kind of want to have the option. I don't want somebody else deciding that for me, and that's the, probably the part I kind of struggled with that. Yeah. Somebody else deciding if I can listen to him or not listen to him. And yeah. He is what if he was... is. He's blatantly what he is. Yeah. Yeah, he is. 
and I, I read an article the other day about his dad. I don't know how true this is because I only read half the article. But they were talking about his dad being in a in a march in 1929, I think it was, a Ku Klux Klan march. He was arrested because he wouldn't move away from the area. So he wasn't arrested for being in the march, but I think the the uh, implication was that he was part of the march. So clearly he had um, a dad with fairly, what I would say were far, far further right, far right views. Mm. Um, so he's just, a, a pro his character is really just a product of, of, of that relationship, I guess. Yeah. Most dads to are- some ex To some extent. Most yeah. dads from that generation are probably a little bit far right. Well, I remember my dad had certain views and I didn't, yeah. didn't relate to them, but they were so what they were. There was no budge in them, you know. That's same, the, same, same here. Yeah, my 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 parents from a different generation, um, from a town, you know, west of, west of England towards Herefordshire, and uh, yeah, just just a different world. Yeah, black and white yeah. perspectives, you know, one yeah. way or another, right or wrong, yeah. you know, absolutes. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, my, they've changed. They've changed. My dad died six years ago, but my mum has changed a lot now. Yeah. yeah, and I think she always was really, really quite open, but just didn't have the opportunity to talk to anyone else about it. Mm. You know? Yeah, I wonder did they reach a certain point though, um, where they just hedged their bets? I mean, I think of my mum, and I think you know she is actually open. Some things I might say to her, I know they're not they're not out of the realms, and yet she's very religious. You know, you know she'll go to mass, and when she was here for Christmas, um, there's myself, my wife, and the three kids, and my mum, and she'd be blasting the church because she couldn't go to church, so she's singing along to church in the front room, and all the kids are just it's amusing for my house because there's just no religion here, you know. Yeah. It's quite sweet, though. I remember being a kid and my, my grandparents used to go to church all the time and, and my auntie and I was, you know, dragged along, not unwillingly because I quite enjoyed it. I liked the buildings. I liked the social environment. Um, I didn't really know what what we were going for. You know, people would get up and then eat some bread and drink some wine. But I, I wouldn't do that. I didn't really understand what was happening. So I just wouldn't join in. And that, that happened pretty much all, up until I, I got older. Everybody would get up and have the wine and bread. And I was just like, I'm not doing this. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. From a very young age? I just sit there on my own. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I kind of like that your parents didn't make you do it. You know, there wasn't a, you know, a guilted into it or whatever. Yeah. Well, it must, actually, have, it must, it must have been uh, Church of England. It wasn't Catholic. Then, was no, it was it was a Church of England, a Baptist church, yeah. actually. And um, my parents weren't that involved. I would go and stay with my grandma and my so it would be my grandma and my auntie, that kind of side that would that would, that would take me along. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean for me, I was it was Catholic religion, so the guilt card would have been used, but I still was kind of on to it. I was on to things like confession, you know, I was on to the idea that you'd have to go into a room and start. I knew I had to make up shit. So I remember going in one day going, no, I don't. I was forced to go in and I went in and said, look, I'm forced to go in here. I've done nothing wrong. Um, and we sat there and I can't. I, I was delighted that I just went in and said that, I think, that that, yeah. that was possible because I just yeah. didn't buy into the whole. I'm going to confess my sins. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. like you said, rather than just making something up, finding something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it used yeah. to be the same thing. I'm fighting with my brothers and sisters. I've said a few swear words, whatever I'd rattle off, and then there'd be three Hail Marys and two Our Fathers. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad had quite, quite um, a, a more extreme religious upbringing, I think. Um, so I've heard his his father, my grandfather was a brethren preacher, and I think brethren sort of follow the word of God, or something like that in the Bible. So it's quite quite strict. So my dad wasn't allowed to play football on a Sunday, for instance. Right. Yeah, so there was no sort of 
nothing, not doing anything pleasurable on a day of rest. Um, and dad ended up not being very religious, actually. Um, I think he always had a, a sort of fondness for, for it in a sort of ch quite a childlike way. You know, mm. he would he would say things to me when I was little, like life is brief, like the falling of a leaf. Yeah, that's lovely, though. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better than you're going to burn in hell, Darren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you dirty is article. That, is, is that what you got from your, uh, your uh, well, search? I think anything to do with sex is definitely it, dirty. Yeah. I mean, I think the Irish invented dirty. I mean, I think we, yeah. well, yeah. I, I think we did filthy. a good job of filthy, filthy. dirty. Filthy dirty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, in fairness, you could say that it added a new dimension to the whole thing, but, um, you know, this idea of screwing it up in a way, but definitely anything to do with sex is dirty. I think, did I, I mean, there was mass, for Lent, for example, we would have gone to mass every single day. And then we would have had family prayers every night. Um, oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> They were quite close, like things like contraception would have been a big deal, all of that, yeah. 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 When did you when did you get interested in um in the non-duality kind of side of things? Was that a lot later? Well, I didn't have the words for it, but I, I think definitely something happened in my twenties where uh, uh I didn't have, I, I mean, it was all religion and a certain belief in God definitely was there or some higher lark at some sort of belief system. And then something happened in my very early 20s where my head was blown off, but I didn't have any, I, I just kept going. I kept, I kept trying to say to a few people and was incredible anxiety of the fact that the, something was happening and there could be nothing, but there was something. So that was a kind of a, I remember going around and felt like half my head was blown off that I'd look, look, fucking hands. And but I, I remember even trying to have a conversation and I couldn't get my head around the fact that there was a conversation happening and, and that there was a conversation happening was mind blowing. And we didn't get to talk about that. And I thought, right, well, I'm obviously there's this some sort of anxiety now here develop some sort of anxiety so I didn't I don't you see I don't even that doesn't there's nothing spiritual about that experience there's no words for it but I kind of now look back to that time where something beyond anything I had ever learned or read or heard about just that there was something happening mm. you know so then uh, maybe it was in my, I think after my father died, which is in my thirties, I went searching, but rapidly, even though, uh, you know, rapidly I stumbled across, across non-duality and that was here in Tony Parsons and a guy called Leo Hortong, Hortang. Oh, um, yeah. Awakening I, I, like to, I read the book, I, I read the book Awakening to the Dream. Yeah. And that really, I actually just read the line, there's no one. And that suddenly just, again, I, I, I kind of went, I've never read words like that before. I've never read the words, there is no one. I just, yeah, blew my, my, um, blew my mind. So then rapidly, even it was a week later, Tony Parsons came to town. And um, after that, I, I started to look to find, <laughs> <laughs> look to find what, um, what I just described, really, yeah, yeah. in a way. Oh. Yeah. Oh, what about you? How did that happen? Oh, sort of, um, sort of a similar way. I guess in my twenties, I came across uh, Jid Jiddu Krishnamurti. I've I've read something, uh, one book, just one book, and uh, I just remember finding it fascinating, really interesting. It's something, um, you know, people use that word resonate. I guess it resonated. Um, but then that was it for, for a really long time till maybe five years ago. In between there was lots of um, um, 
sort of experimenting or messing around with meditation just to relax for relaxation um i remember i did a, a no-show dynamic meditation once for about a year that felt amazing you know six seven months into that so much energy um i didn't particularly do it for any sort of spiritual reasons it just sounded interesting so i just thought well I'll, I'll do that yeah and then um and then i think about five yeah about five years ago life wasn't going on the exactly on the trajectory i wanted it to go on or i was hoping it to go on and then um i came across i read the power of now that was it yeah <laughs> read the power of now like a lot of people do i think Mm. I read The Power of Now, and then I just went onto the internet, and I typed into the internet after reading that, how many enlightened people are there in the world? And it came up with a list of 10. And one of them was, um, in the list was Muji, and he just looked nice. So I ended up listening to him for a few weeks on YouTube, maybe three weeks, four weeks. Um, I listened to a lot of his stuff. And then I considered going to India on a trip to India because I felt I felt like a break anyway. And then before I did that, I I was in my local park in Brixton, and um, I was with my boy, and I was alone in the park. And I saw a guy coming towards me with a girl, and he, he looked familiar. And as he got closer, I rec I realised it was Muji. And I'm, I said, as he got closer, I said Muji, and I was thinking, what are you doing in my park, local park? He said, yes. I said, oh, hi. <laughs> I've been listening to your YouTube for the last, you know, th three weeks. And we had a little chat and then I said goodbye. And that kind of, somehow, I didn't listen to Muji anymore after that. Um, and then I came across, maybe it may have been Tony or Lisa Cairns or some one, one of them. Because by now I've listened to so many people, much like you. You know the the the, the usual list, um, but once I came across Tony, that was it, really. It was like, well, it was it was really ob obvious to me that that some something in that was what I was looking for. What I was looking for is a bit of a strange thing. It just was really, really interesting. Yeah, and it could and I just listened to him and hundreds of hours of podcasts and talks and books read all the books and just voraciously looking for that one line <laughs> that, would, that would do it yeah well then i'll get it <laughs> but of course there's no getting it yeah yeah yeah. And can you remember, um, or uh, it's an odd question, but um, like you could be reading the bag of the back of a bag of crisps, and I'd know, I'd sense, or whatever, I'd have that kind of sense that it's probably over. You know, you could say that's total bullshit, Frank. Um, but it's kind of sensed, sometimes it's kind of sensed around how that seeking is over and now that's a bit of a story but it's all I, I i think i've just kind of got the sense of it or there's a feeling comes in like so you'd put in but one sentence and it might be an absolutely irrelevant sentence and i know that seeking for other than writing that sentence wasn't happening do you know what i mean do you know what yeah. i mean by what i'm talking about there can you remember um is there, yeah. was there an, an end game an end game oh, when yeah, well, it kind of drifted off over, 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 oh, I'm trying to think now, because I was at a, I was at a meeting with Roger Linden, and we were talking, Roger was talking about the space in the room, and the looking, and the first, I mean, oh God, it sounds like I'm going to say the first thing that happened, but this was just something that happened. There was this recognition of the emptiness in the looking, that the looking was completely empty. And uh, there was a sort of tingle that went up my spine of, of this, of this, oh, that, <laughs> 
but and then immediately there was this feeling of oh but it can't be just that that can't be that it has to be something it has to be something else <laughs> so there was the, so then there was this sort of fairly elated sort of joyous feeling for it for about 24 hours of of not having to look for, for a feeling of not having to look for what I was looking for it was just really relaxing mm -hmm. I didn't need to look for that um and then that sort of went away and then over maybe a month or two there was still some sort of look at seeking because it felt like what I was it felt like what had been recognized was couldn't have been what I was looking for I had to, there had, had to be something else and also when you hear other speakers talk because they all talk about it in different ways you know Nancy has this beautiful way of talking about it and some people talk about it in a really ordinary way you build these ideas about about what this what, what, what what's being talked about and um, and uh, slowly I just think that rec that emptiness just seemed to be there all the time and and at the same time the seeking just wasn't there in in, in, in that way that des desperation to get something had, had gone yeah um, but it's still not felt like anything's got <laughs> oh no yeah not at all no no yeah, I think that's the impossibility. Yeah. yeah, the impossibility is describing that it it could be the case that seeking might reboot and happen, because who knows? But it just seems impossible. It seems yeah. impossible. It, but, but then who know who knows? Because I don't really know what's happening. I don't I don't know what I'm saying or how what I'm going to think or act or I, I just don't know. Yeah. But even that doesn't mean anything either. So uh, I don't know. I can't, uh, do you know what I mean by that? By it could be the case. It could be full of joy. It could be continuing to seek. It could be maybe tears. I don't know. Could be could be a bit of tears. But who knows? Then it's like the it's somehow that's the recognition. That's not a recognition. It's impossible to describe in a way. Like the but then words like the you know. The brakes don't work. It seems like there's brakes, but the brakes don't work. It seems like there's a steering wheel, but the steering wheel really, you're kind of, it's one of those imaginary things where you feel like you're turning the steering wheel, but you're not like. Mm. It's, and then it's, that's the dream bus analogy that some lately kind of, I really, I like, you know, it does seem like you're the boss and you've got your brakes there. If you're yeah. seeking, especially, you know, uh, it seems like they're all working, but they they're not like nothing's yeah working. and then you're you know the you ride to, go yeah. On, sorry, yeah and then you go to bed at night and you, you go to bed at night and you well you don't disappear it just the dream just stops and then there's another dream and then there's this dream again and you know this feels really feels really real um and it is and it's not <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. you wrote there, it's like going a thousand miles. No matter what you say about it, you're still, it's still this. Like you can tell a gazillion stories, you can travel 10,000 10, miles, you can go to multiple yeah. dimensions if that's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Let's just say. And it's still. Yeah. 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 There was a really strong sense of, of that at first, especially traveling, getting in a car and going, traveling a long journey. There was a real sense of, of uh, uh, apparently arriving and of having gone from one place to another, but but a feeling of, of not moved at all. It always yeah, feels completely still. You could say in one way it feels completely still and in another way there's all the movement. Yeah. yeah. Not in another way though, in the same way. It's in the it's same still way. And move, it's still and moving, yeah. Yeah, every every inch seems to have a sort of a rabbit hole. Every every, I mean, you, you talk about this being the trip, but like it, it it's another word. It's, it doesn't capture it, but this in a way is the trip in the sense of 
was every inch is the rabbit hole, every discussion, every movement, every breath, yeah. every whatever, it seems to be and still empty. That's the, you know, this empty full, like it's full to the brim and nothing. Yeah. And how do you say nothing's happening at the same time? But yeah, it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter at all. Um, but it's a relief to not be looking for it. it. It's a relief to not be looking. Yeah. Yeah. The twisted, yeah. Tor demented, tormented, wound up to the nines, yeah. looking and not even knowing, you know, I mean, at least if you're on the treasure hunt for money, there's money. You don't even know what you're looking for. And then in the end, I think in the end, when you, you intellectually hear this is nothing to get, still, it kind of almost proves that or it kind of is perfectly described as the seeker in the sense, yeah. you know, running out of air, running absolutely nowhere and still feeling like it's running, going somewhere, seeking. You're still getting somewhere, even though you're, you're utterly breathless. There's no prize, there's no end line, there's no anything, and yet there's still this, oh, but I still, somebody, the, what, what you'll hear is, but I still feel, and what I would have said, yeah, but I still feel like I'm seeking here, and it seems like you're not. And that, and that, that reinforces, in a way, the search. Yeah. You know, you feel like somebody over there has got it. So even if they're yeah. telling you, it's nothing to get yeah. at. Yeah, it almost, it almost it is just that, it is just that feeling or statement or sentence, but 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 there must be it's that it, that is it. Um, yeah. Although somehow I don't know. I don't know whether. Oh, I don't know. I was just going to go into it. You know how sometimes as well the mind can pick it up, and you start to go into a little. Um, sort of intellectual idea about it and I was mm. about to follow one and I've just learned not to follow those because they just don't go <laughs> they don't they don't go anywhere <laughs> no no can be fun sometimes but yeah no. I really well, see, uh, by the way oh, go, go, on, on. Yeah. go on I was no, going no, to no, say no. that the freedom in a way is that uh, if, if I was to describe the relief the relief is that it is actually there's there's zero difference between talking about um, carrots and potatoes and non-duality and freedom and liberation and joy and sorrow and wonder. If I was to describe, I would say the, the relief is that it's all there's there's no energy in between the each one of them. There's no difference in a way, mm. even though you could probably say. It. But you know what I mean by the relief is that it can be anything can be said, and it's still. It's still it. So if it's not clear, then that's it. And if it is clear, then that's it. Or if it's some, you yeah. know, it, it doesn't yeah. have to be a certain way. No. I, I, for here as well, I felt for a long time that unless it was understood and it could be described in the way that I heard it being described by other people so wonderfully, then it, it just wasn't relevant. But now it, it feels real like. Deal. Yeah, that's right. Now it just feels like um, it can be described however it's, I was going to say however it's experienced, but it's not like that. It was trying, it's trying to describe something that can't be described. And you can describe, you can, you can describe that however that this character describes it. Yeah. It's trying to describe yeah. describing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do like way. talking about I, I do like talking about it, though. I find it, um, I was talking to Tim Cliss the other day about it. I, I find it sort of enlivens it and mm. it sort of quickens it. And there's something... I'd agree with that, um, yeah. Almost exciting about it. It's joyous, kind of almost like love. Mm. I don't know, it's like, oh, it's just talking about something that... And as you start to talk about it and it gets enlivened, you start to use those words like love or, oh, it's so this, so that. And so, of course, to a seeker, it's going to sound like something to get. Mm. But if you don't tickle it or enliven it up a bit, it's just really ordinary. <laughs> yeah. 
there is something it's kind of almost like a, you know this is this is totally not the word but i like the word like a quickening it's totally not a quickening but i like the idea of a kindling it just there is it can there's something in it in um is there? I don't know whether there is not. But fuck it. You know, there is. There's know. just that kind of chemistry yeah. that sort of, yeah, um, yeah boundless. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know either. You're, yeah, you're exactly right. I don't know, but it feels like that. It feels like there is. And yeah. it's, it's enjoyable. Um, I was going to say I really enjoyed your. I watched your five MEO film. Oh right, yeah. Nights couple of nights ago really really enjoyed it i i loved your relationship with um your friends and yeah. i thought the film was put together really well it's edited up really well the storytelling was great um yeah it was just really interesting oh, and, much, yeah. and, and very moving as well at the end i thought for when boris was talking that was very you know brought brought a tear a tear to my eye yeah it's lovely yeah, I think there was a debate about whether that would be kept in or not kept in at one stage. But um, yeah. I think um, in a way, I don't want to give away that bit, <laughs> but um, Boris would kill me if I gave away that bit. But um, so I can leave it in and take it out. But that that bit, you know, that sentence, just those few words about scary. I, yeah. I kind of like that edginess because in a way this is edgy. This is edgy. Scary might capture it, but it also there is that whoa, versus the safety and security of being a person in a world on an earth in time and space. There's a, a certain amount of constrained and that, that obviously can become too annoying or too horrible, but that constrained safety can feel like comfort zone, you, you know, it, can, it ends up being a straitjacket. That's what I've heard described, the self would say. But without that, this is, has edgy flavors. It's edgy, it's um, crisp, scary is another word. Don't, you know, mm. there's something that appeared to happen. Like what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, yeah. It's not predictable. It's not controllable. It's wild, free. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just realized as well, of course, we shouldn't talk about your film too much because I might just go, oh, I love that bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, uh, yeah. I think um, yeah. one concern I kind of had with the idea of. I mean, nothing matters, but I don't like the idea that it, it, it can give the impression of um, psychedelics is a way to see anything, you know. And in some ways, I, uh, when this when this let's just say ended, it was clearly obvious that it was in spite of everything and anything. That was absolutely clear that in spite of everything, because that just happened. And that could have, could so happen that it, you could be doing 20 MEO or it could, you know, that path if you felt there was something to get. But I don't know, did you get that impression that it gave that? No. No, that's okay. Yeah, it's kind of, it's just one of those things I had in my mind. Yeah. Always, no, you know. I thought, and because of that as well, I thought it was done, it was done well. I'm glad okay. that, it, that it didn't, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. If anyone's yeah. watching this, they should uh, yeah go and watch it. It's it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boris, is, Boris will be um, Boris likes to listen to these, so um, you can say he's really shit, Boris. <laughs> 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 he's a great yeah. filmmaker. He's a great filmmaker. He's yeah. a brilliant actor and he's a lovely eye. Well, I won't say anything about that bit with Boris, but I I, I thought it was beautiful putting that in it. yeah it was it was a beautiful moment yeah okay um, um and um so you were in drugstore all those yeah. years ago i was in an indie rock band i was a rock star <laughs> fucking you bastard 
Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, tell, me, tell me, would you, can you tell me a little bit about how you ended up in a band and how, I mean, I think I read something about it actually, but yeah. just even, because yeah. I was so into it, so into indie music, so yeah, that was something really I wanted to do, you know, be in a band. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, I, I, I used to, um, my dad played guitar and um, I learned to play guitar when I was fairly, I was older, I didn't really pick up a guitar till I was about 16, 15 or 16. And uh, I was listening to David Bowie a lot. And uh, I just, I don't know, I don't know what idea I had in my head. I don't think it was particularly to be in a band. I just loved David Bowie. Hmm. And, um, and, and I loved, oh, so, songs so I'd, i before i picked up a guitar i did like writing so that was like like words um like book poetry maybe kind of um so then a guitar was just a useful way of being able to put words to to a sort of structure and uh i learned to play guitar and then at some point i thought i'm gonna move to london and i'm gonna get in a band and i'm gonna get a record deal and it seemed pretty straightforward <laughs> <laughs> I could I could play guitar by then, so I moved to London and um, for a few years I just did a did a, a, a regular job and then um, I thought oh maybe I'll get a job in the music industry and then I'll find a band that way because there'll be loads of bands and I'll join one, mm -hmm. get a record deal. <laughs> that seemed obvious that way. So then uh, a, a job came up in the Melody Maker. I remember seeing a job for the Mean Fiddler the live music venue place and they were looking for a promoter to run one of their music venues in Islington. So I went for that job along with lots of other people and when I arrived I thought I've no chance of getting this. I've just no, no experience. I've got you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. what, have, what have I got to offer with all of these music-y people here? <laughs> and for some reason the guy that ran it, Vince Power, took a liking to me and I got the job to my surprise. And um, I loved it. Oh, I was so thrilled. And I ran that place for about four years, booking bands like Blur, Pulp, Pixies, bands, you know, like 90s, 90s bands. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Pixies, um, wow, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and then at some point, um, I, you know, I was going to gigs every night, just listening to music all the time, looking for new bands to put on the venue. And then um, I came across Drugstore uh, because they'd released a track called Alive, which I really liked. And then just after that, it was Single of the Week in Melody Maker. And I put a gig on and then they were looking for a guitarist and I said, hey, I can play guitar. And then, so I joined Drugstore and two months later, we were offered a record deal. So it seemed to just kind of go like that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we signed to Go Discs. Go Discs, who had at the time they had Travis and the Lars and Paul Weller and uh, Beautiful South, loads of other bands. So they were doing quite well, and so we got a good record deal, and they had plenty of money. So we got to enjoy, the, you know, the whole experience. Then, which it was before you know Spotify, and now there's no money for bands. So we got yeah. to kind of live it, live it like it was like we were already making a fortune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Travel, you know, traveling all over Europe and all over America and in nice tour buses. And it was great fun. Was great mm. fun. Oh, I'd say so, yeah. I mean, well, the ideas that you'd have of what that was like, you know, growing up as a teenager in your 20s, even just all those bands, all those bands you name, and they're the heroes of the, those, the 90s, really. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know. It was amazing. And, you know, and being in a band, it's fun, but it's also um, challenging, you know, traveling with uh, three of the three or four, three, three other people plus your crew um, and being so close together for such long periods, you know, personality clashes. And um, we had a really fiery Brazilian singer, this uh, girl called Isabel. Uh, so it wasn't all 
roses. Of course, yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> no. I just want to hear about the drugs but, and the rock and roll. But, yeah, the... but it's also <laughs> part of what made it's also part of what made it um, you know, the camaraderie, a real, suppose, a real yeah. full experience. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um and um and uh, how long did you do that for? Um, I did that for about eight, seven or eight eight years. So I think um, I did the Mean Fiddler and then I left there. So it would have been about 94 to 2002, something like that. About eight years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And do you, did you make money at the time or was it just you live in, you know, yeah, you see... Well, documentaries where the bands really you know they lived the lifestyle but every piece of that was expensed by the record company exactly and and that's also as it was at the time when the record company's spending a fortune you know a tour of america costs 60 70 grand you know it costs to make a video then was a fortune you know yeah. we were making videos all of the time they cost a fortune now you can make them for you know 200 pounds i know yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it would be way better than the videos we would have made then. Um, so, as you say, all of that goes on to your costs, um, and then you've got your manager taking his percentage and your aid, the agent taking his. So, in the end, no, very, very little. You need to be selling, you know, probably upwards of half a million, a million uh, albums to start really mm. making any money, and we we weren't selling that many. Um, I think in the end, I, I used to have a I used to have a letter that sort of said how much we owed in the end, and I think it was something like half a million pounds uh, to Polygram because we moved we went from Godis to Polygram and then to another label and to another label in the end, and I think we ended up owing Polygram about half a million. Um, I suspect that that's not actually true. I suspect that they made all their money back. But yeah. you know how the the costs work, yeah. But uh, I, I love that letter. I wish I could find it, I could frame it and stick it in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Jeez. So that was the way. Never giving you another penny. Was that it? In a way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah because then all uh, any any future sales go towards go towards paying that off. But uh, but of course you don't have to pay that off either, because it's just part of future sales. So um. Yeah. So really, you just get to. Sp- spend a ton of money and have a great time <laughs> well it's a whirlwind existence in a way i mean the, uh, that life on the road must be uh, interesting and can i ask you who would you have um of the characters that you would have met in terms of in the bands would you is there ones that you would be very fond of in terms of you know you meet certain people that you vibe off and there's just certain energy certain uniqueness or certain originality to certain characters in yeah. that industry, in that world, would you have met many that you would have kind of gone? Yeah. Yeah, usually it would have been people, for me, it would be people that I really respected musically. So it wouldn't necessarily have to be their personality. It would just be, I, I found, I mean, I've always been a real fan. I find good songwriters, talented writers, really fascinating and interesting. Mm. So it would have been the bands that I liked. Um, uh, we took we toured a couple of times with Radiohead. Really liked Radiohead. They were they were great. All of them, really yeah. creative, uh, super talented. Each of them in their in a, in their own way, and together mm-hmm. as a band, just what a, what a force. Um, and it was really interesting touring with them and watching the way that they worked. Um, we were we toured on uh, the Benz. When they, they just oh, released wow, Benz, yeah. and um, Benz was unbelievable. Yeah, and in soundcheck, I would hear these. They would they would be jamming often, and the, and the jams got quite familiar because you'd hear them sort of night after night or different ones. And then when OK Computer was released, I realised that there were big sections that I recognised from that that I'd heard in in soundcheck that they were just jamming. So they were writing while they were touring as well and you know, coming up with ideas yeah brilliant um and i like tom we i remember going shopping with him once 
trying to buy clothes, you know, trying on clothes. Going, what, do you, what do you think of this? Does this look all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it looks yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. mm. And um, uh, we talked with Jeff Buckley as well. He was amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really yeah. nice guy. Really funny. Yeah, good at telling jokes. Good, at, Really good at doing impressions, voices. And, and uh, a great guitarist. And actually, yeah. we actually we were in the tour van. We hadn't really heard much of, of Jeff before we we actually played with him. So we were in the tour van going to the first uh, gig, and that was the first time we listened to his album Grace. And we put the album on, and we're on the van, and we're all like, hmm, I'm "Not sure what I think of this." It's a bit, a bit kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I got to the gig, we played the gig, and. The first time I saw him play, it was like it completely made sense. It's like, wow, this this guy's voice is amazing, yeah. and his playing was great. He was really charismatic, um, and yeah, and instantly fell in love with that. And then we all became quite good friends. And he would come on every night, so we would support him. He'd come on, he'd have a shower in the room before he was going on to play and he'd come on with this towel on his head so you couldn't see him. He'd come on the back and the, our drummer would swap places with him and he'd drum with us for a few songs because he loved cool. drumming. Yeah. yeah, and at some point he might take his, you know, the reveal, take the towel off and everyone's like, <laughs> he was lovely, he was lovely. I'm very sad that, that he, um, he, yeah, for people don't know much about Jeff, he, he died in a, a tragic accident in the, um, drowned in the Mississippi, yeah. uh, swimming, yeah. Swimming, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember just seeing five minutes of him on a, um, a chat and he had that kind of uh, interview, just it was a nonsense interview in a way, but he had that kind of contemplative sort of authenticness, whether imagined or not, I, I, I thought this is, he's just, has that kind of originality thing going on, going through his, and I mean, obviously the huge influence with his father, but he definitely had, that voice is just outrageous. Yeah. Yeah, and we were really lucky. Um, he did, um, there's a little, there's something on the internet where he was singing one of our songs, which was a real treat. We came across it, he was playing in New York somewhere and he did a cover of a drugstore song um, yeah, I, I just love that he did that. Yeah, yeah, we were really lucky in that way. We also got to do um, a single with Tom. We did a like a duet with our singer and Tom at one point. A um, president. Is, yeah, that's right. Isabel yeah. had written a song about um, uh, Salvador Allende, the um, the uh, socialist uh, leader in. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, and uh, sorry, I was just thinking of Pinochet, and um, at that time, we did, yeah, it's, it's all all the memories are coming back. Um, but Tom really liked the content of that song because it was about the assassination of, of Salvador Allende, and so it's quite political. Mm. Tom was Tom's pretty right on, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, it's lovely the passion of that and the political statements of bands or whatever. You know, it's kind of it's a lovely thing that bands. I don't know if they do them as much now. I really, I really don't know. But you, uh, this is I, I find myself going, "Oh, the bands were way better," which is just so predictable to say the bands were way better in the '90s than they are now. And the, <laughs> you know, it's such a predictable older person saying yeah. that about a previous generation but it feels like that there was at least something attempted at being said if you know what i mean there was some sort of a, a statement made mm -hmm. which is, seems to be rarer nowadays yeah it's so it's impossible to know because of what you just said it's i have no idea whether it's just nostalgia it i heard is, my yeah. my dad would say the same thing about his era it does feel different now it feels less no i was just gonna say i'd be shot down for it to say it's like less diverse because it's really diverse now and music is 
even more you could say because it's so spread out and there's so many options there's so many opportunities to 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 uh, find music in different ways and you can do it in such small ways there's a real probably more music available than there was back then but there's something about that yeah, the nineties were great. But let's yeah. just say even sitting down and you say, you say that like because you do it like I turn on my Spotify and I, I do have the the world open, and yet it almost kind of what like click on one of my playlists from the fucking nineties, and I'm kind of annoyed with myself then when I do that because I I go ah oh, no, no no I need, and so that, so then uh, what I'm doing of late is. Uh, vinyls going back putting on a vinyl sitting oh, down nice. yeah and I, and, and you're, you're on that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's a it's a quite it's, it is a different experience sitting mm. with the vinyl yeah but I, yeah. yeah yeah and holding albums i love i love albums and i have to say i don't play that that pet deck that often i i use spotify but it gives me but I but I get a great a huge amount of pleasure just looking at it yeah it's probably a bit of that with me too <laughs> the idea of it yeah the tactile as the artist intended it you know that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but Spotify just boom 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 yeah. yeah it's almost like an artifact it's like an ancient artifact it's like oh <laughs> it, really, it is yeah it is yeah. and it's slow I got an album by Wilco. Wilco's new recommended Wilco to me. Or actually, oh, it was yeah. bought for me by my brother. And um, and it's there's twelve songs and two discs. So you play three songs, then you flip it over. You get three more songs. Then you take that out, put it back in the packaging, and you take out the new one. You t on three songs and you flip again. Yeah. So it's great. It's just, you know, it's yeah. a bit slower. Yeah. Good band, Wilco. I think they. I think one of them used to be in a band called Uncle Tupelo. I remember I booked them once. Uh, they were a good band. Good band. I'll tell you who else I like um, that I came across because of you is the Villagers. That nothing arrived track. It's oh, a great, that's yeah. a great track. I love it. It really became one is, of my yeah. one of my favorite tunes actually. I coming across that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, same as that. It's funny, I use that for you wouldn't get away with putting it in something now, but I put it in um Life and Free Fall that I did for Kenneth, the black and white one all those years ago. I think I that's where I heard it. it. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I don't even I just know uh it's funny one of those songs that you hear the words and it's uh, yeah, amazing that there's words like that in there. Now, we, mm. I asked his permission to use it for five MEO and we've paid for it this time, we've, you know, but for that one, I didn't pay for it, but we paid a few bob for it in the movie. Yeah, it's great. And the words feel really um, kind of non-dual. I don't think they are. But it no, I don't like think that. so either. No, you can no. you can put them on us, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. it has a real but but the um, the feeling inside it feels like that. It's almost like yeah, you put if you put them on it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The temptation is to want to change a few words, a few lines, then you can mm. make it like a it's a great <laughs> non-dual song. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, there's a bit of that, all right. You just or you kind of just go, I just. I'll ignore that. I'll ignore those little bits. Yeah. 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 Uh, another track I really liked that you played um, was um, Youth, the wartime, wartime blues track that you use. You use it for, uh, I think so, yeah. 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 So that that was nice to come across. So thanks for those. No, I, I think that that song, I think Kenneth sent it to me um, years ago. And then I I mean, it's it that to me is a huge song. It's it's as good as any song you'd hear out there. And I mean, these the guy he only had a few hundred views. It, it, it these were in the back ass and nowhere in the US and didn't go anywhere. That song, but it is it, a huge song. I think. I mean, it's arcade yeah, fire esque in its yeah. style. Yeah, absolutely. And the video is great too. 
It is yeah. really good, yeah. Yeah. If, so they, if, if they want... Go on, I was sorry. Say, if anyone's listening, I'm going to say who it is again. It's The Villagers, and the track's called Nothing Arrived. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Um... There's, a, there's a nice cover on, on Spotify as well by a girl. I think her name's Emma Beale, maybe? And she does a cover of it, like an acoustic, you know, okay. female, sweet female voice, slowed down a little bit. So it's a nice, it's a nice cover. It's not as good as, well, it's different to theirs. Yeah. And um, do you write yourself now, or? Um, not so much. I was talking to somebody about it the other day. I there's not really any motivation or goal goal there's sort of no reason to if somebody asked me to write something tomorrow then i could sit down and write something and i really enjoy writing with other people if that opportunity comes up but there's no if i sit down and i sometimes i come up with an idea and i think oh this sounds good oh those chords are nice and then inevitably yeah. you get some words and you go oh, that sounds good but what happens here is then there is this thought of Oh, I can see this is turning into a song. If it turns into a song, I'm going to have to get out all the recording stuff. I'm going to have to record it. I've got to put the bass down. And suddenly it's like, and I just, no, I put the guitar down. <laughs> I'm okay. not going to do all that. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you, if you ever um, create any guitars and you want somebody to put a voice to it, I'd love to have a go. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. So if you do, yeah, if you do, just throw it over to me. I mean, in, yeah. Um, because I have definitely an appetite for that sort of thing at the moment. So if you do okay. happen to create anything and that yeah. notion does come your way, yeah. then All right. I've got a voice yeah, in there. Might, it. Never know, it might happen now. Yeah, yeah that'd be great. I'd love it. Um, I was going to ask you, I, I have, um, I think I haven't watched it, but I, I do you think it's going to happen where you're going to start talking about talking? That about this, I've seen the nothing. Um, it's come up, I haven't watched it yet. Do you think it's going to be something that'll happen, or have you any, any idea? I don't know. Um, Emerson messaged me that that day on my birthday, I, and he said, do you, Would you look, do you um, can we have a chat? So I thought maybe he just wants to chat. So I, I said, Yeah, sure. So I messaged him back, and then we were chatting, and he said, Do you mind if I record this? And then uh, I said, yeah, fine. And so then he, he put it up after that afternoon, which, which was fine. Um, uh, and, but I didn't really think about it much. Mm. I didn't consider it. Normally, before, I was going to say before this happened, which it didn't happen, but before <laughs> I would have been way more sort of controlling about it and I would have been no I'm not gonna not gonna do that I'm gonna I would have thought about it a lot so now there seems to be less thought about it so part I don't know maybe maybe mm. maybe not I don't feel like I've got anything to say mm. and I don't and I don't feel like I could, I could really answer questions not well some questions but not all questions so I'm not I wouldn't be like a you know Jim Newman you know sort of machine gun kind of it's like this hyper focused <laughs> yeah 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 Jim, yeah. it doesn't necessarily resonate uh that sort of i don't sense that's on uh, that unknowing you know it is it is machine gun approach it's <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. yeah um so maybe um you won't have to answer the questions anyway <laughs> exactly well exactly and, and there is that, like, like you know, yeah. it's only a thought. It's only a thought. It's an idea. Exactly. I, yeah. I can totally relate to that idea. Um, of, well, yeah. I mean, I probably won't be able to answer all the questions, you know. Yeah. But yeah. you won't have to. They'll either be answered or yeah. they won't be answered. Yeah. yeah. Um, so maybe, if it if it's enjoyable, I might give it a, tr a, a, pl a play around with it, and if it's fun, then maybe if I enjoy it. But uh, yeah. I'm sort of in between at the moment with the with the idea. Not that I'm thinking about it. It's more of a feeling. Part part of me goes, "Oh yeah, that's fun." Part of me goes, mm. <laughs> "Yeah, yeah." That's strange yeah. to say. Part of me. 
Yeah, but I can totally get because there isn't anything to say. But then there is that also that kind of edginess of you. Uh, you'd be as intrigued by what you say as anyone else, if you know what I mean. And that'll be interesting, in a way, to hear it back and to go, oh, well, right, that's interesting. It came out like that, or not that it came out like that, but when there isn't a controller and somebody figuring out the ch -ch -ch of the right way to frame a sentence so it should sound a certain way or sound like something, then it'll just come out like that, and that'll be the expression then, in a way. You know what I mean? And that'll be, that's, that's where it's kind of, it's a kind of, it's like somebody singing, really, isn't it? It's the same sort of thing. It's exactly really. the same. That's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. It's like writing a song. It's like singing with, it's like writing a song with somebody and the spontaneity and the surprise at, at what turns up and sing it, singing together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and things seem to appear in a, in a, a way that they just perhaps wouldn't have in a different way. So. It's just, a, yeah, a lovely surprise thing. Yeah, yeah I, and I think it is, in a way, I was emailing somebody and we were talking about creativity and we were kind of talking about the boom, we'd say, of creativity or whatever. And then it was kind of uh, thought occurred uh, that, that um, oh, sure, look, everything is creativity, really. It just, there's an idea that this is a song, so that's creativity, but talking is not creativity or writing just if you're writing an ordinary email that's not creativity but if you're writing up a, a thing called a poem that is creativity but in a sense it's all creativity it's all yeah. this unfolding even if it's do you know what i'm saying that's kind of interesting yeah. i thought it was interesting yeah. that sense that of course everything is creativity because everything is yeah. this yeah it's all appearing as the same thing. It's, it's, um, you could say, yeah, it, it felt before like the intention of writing a song, you would, you'd sit down, but then there would be this, I've tried to think about before how it feels, but it's like, you could say it's like getting out of the way, getting out the way of yourself. So it's quite, it's a bit, sort of non-dual it's like allowing that emptiness allowing that emptiness to be there no the emptiness is it's it's sort of moving it's not even moving into that emptiness you know what i mean it's sort of um it's sort of uh sitting with that emptiness but you're but that's not it either and then in that there's space to create for the creative process to happen so words or lyrics or ideas sort of come and, and then there's a hand that sort of tries to structure them quickly as they're coming and write them down and rearrange them. It's just that open openness. And like you said, that's happening when you're writing an email or when we're talking now. You don't yeah. have to go and you don't have to go to, to that space to look for it. No. Which it felt, it felt more like that then because it wasn't really recognized that that space is, is this. Yeah. yeah. It's always, it's lovely. It's always there, yeah. Yeah, you could tell a story, and it's a, it is a great story about the creative process and how hard it, it is for me or whatever. Yeah. Or, but also then there's that sort of freedom that, um, you know, it bubbles up and out. But then in saying that, that there is a bit of a graft. So if you were writing a book, there is a kind of a, an apparent graft element to it. But then that's still... Yeah this creativity, that'll either happen or it won't, despite all the yeah. thoughts yeah. of, yeah. Country, you know. And, yeah, and I think that you're right, the graft kind of element of it is that the mind does get, or thoughts do start, to, they get very active and they're very lively, you know, and they're jumping around and words are appearing and, you know, it's very, yeah. um, so I guess that's the graft part of it because it's, even though it's exhilarating and at the surprise and at the end and the spontaneity and the pleasure, it's also quite ty tiring. Mm. You know, it's like by the end of the day, it's like, whew, that was, especially if you've written and recorded a song in a day, it's like, whew, that was a, yeah. that was like a, a, a big, big hill climb. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. I kind of have it in my mind of um, sometimes say if I'm writing um, a bit of prose or poems or whatever it is that I write, it, I kind of like there's a sense of, okay, well, this is going to start now. I, I'll, I'll start. And then it's almost like sculpting that it's kind of this not read it over and over and over and a choo 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 and it's chipping 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 away and going yeah okay that seems oh yeah and then silence and you know it's making it seem special but that's it's not but there is that like you described words flying there's this whoop and it can be lesser it can be lesser can't just you know if it's you're just writing something or responding yeah. but then there's that is this movement and all of these ideas come in and maybe maybe then your experience or of you know finesse or tightening up and maybe the more you get better and it's, you chip away chip away chip away choo, yeah. Choo, 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 choo. yeah 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 the finessing that happens as well doesn't it that kind of like mm, yeah no take that that word can come out that can come out and then maybe you kind of look at it again no uh, no i'm going to take that bit and i'm going to stick it on there <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that that's that that's way better <laughs> <laughs> yeah break it yeah or it can be a feeling you know this idea of killing your the original inspiration that you, the original inspiration in a way sometimes has to die in the process but it's probably you know that feeds the whole idea but yes yeah. it doesn't fit in somehow the original little piece even though you're desperately going oh but that was really i really like that and then it's yeah. Okay, I just put it over here. I'm not going to kill it completely. I put yeah. it over here and see how does it look with that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a great way of describing it because it is like that. And, and you want to somehow lever that bit back in. It's like, I must be able to get it in somewhere. Yeah. But, but sometimes, sometimes, yeah, the original idea can be, can be nothing nothing to do with what 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 comes comes up at the end it's almost like the original idea especially in songs sometimes can create a story and then part of that story becomes a bigger story and it's like oh that's what the song's about and then the original idea is sort of not always but can be sort of gone yeah. and then you're left then you're left with something that you had no idea was going to be no idea when yeah. when you started yeah yeah and then tell, there's that yeah. and then you have that feeling of wow where did where did that come from it's like it yeah. comes out of nowhere mm. well it does yeah oh it's just come out of nowhere and that's the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that is yeah. the absolute magic and then the story making apparatus will go that's pretty good now it's like a, you know you know when you go running i don't know how it is for you but um, when the running is there, well, I, it's been a long time since I've been running, in fairness, but <laughs> um, they get this, oh, this is terrible, I'm in pain, or, oh, this is bullshit, I should stop now, and running, keep running. And, and this this unreliable narrator is just, choo -choo -choo. and then at the end, it's, oh, it's great, delighted I did that now, oh, this is, <laughs> you know, it's kind of it's just funny, yeah. yeah. I don't have to do that again till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're uh, you're a great lad for running that, yeah, aren't you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. If that if that's what you want to do, take the credit then. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I love. Um, it's nice talking to you because I've seen I've seen so many of your interviews that I feel like I know you, of course. Which is a lovely feeling. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, some great interviews. You've done so many over over the last few years, haven't you? Yeah, yeah um, I suppose, yeah, it's funny that uh, still happens, you know. Um, but then you see, it's just kind of a vibe. Like you kind of you get that vibe. And um, I would have noticed um, a couple of things you would have put up 
and I just would have had that vibe, and uh, the vibe of I'm going to send him a note now. I'm going to send him a note, and then nothing happens. Nothing, not, nothing happens, and then, then I'm sending you a note one day, and then that's yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's the story I, anyway. I find that too. I, I'll I'll see somebody posting stuff, and I'm like, oh, that's interesting, and then I find myself, yeah, at some point. I've messaged them. It's like, do you want to chat? So, uh, so I'll I'll do that sometimes. I did that with Antonia was the last one a few a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. she's such a. Uh, I want to hear that voice again. That southern drawl. That um, yeah, a Georgian yeah. voice. Um, I love her. Her posts on non-duality are great. I do too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right to the bone. Huh? Right to the mm. heart, really, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so some that you just go, yeah, that's, that's, that's it, like, that's... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, just instantly a little, whatever that is, doesn't matter, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like I was thinking, you know, they're really, it's not like you're, it's obviously we're not talking about it, and it's not something that we can, it can say, oh, Oh, we're talking about a certain thing here, or um, I have no idea what's going on elsewhere. I don't know if we're, are we talking about the same phenomenon, the same crazy fucking, what, this, yeah. this fucking craziness? And craziness isn't the word, it just seems like I'm using the word crazy. How do you, what do you say to anybody about that? Isn't it magnificent? Isn't it stunning? But it's not stunning in a thing to have. It just seems like I am using the words stunning. That's mm. that's as close as I can talk about what we're talking about. Yeah. I think when you when it's rec intuited that everything that is apparently seen or known it isn't known. It's unknowable. Yeah. In that, in that, it's like, you know, what the fuck is it? <laughs> it's it's just it's it's a, it's inconceivable that it's appearing at all, really. Uh, and then the mind comes in, like Nancy calls it, the net of razors. I love that. Chops it all into these these tiny pieces infinitesimal pieces and each piece has a has another piece you know like you can describe that you know the lamp has the you know the lampshade and the bulb and the wood and the parts of the light and it's everything is just shattered into all these bits it's a masterpiece <laughs> yeah but but, but but and those bits aren't you know they're not real they're just it's just not real yeah yeah, it is. It is amazing. Yeah. Hmm. It's something there that um, it's kind of like the rabbit hole. It's just yeah. I do that all the time. It's like, oh, um. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and that's the thing, you know, do you, I, I, do you know what's interesting is half, say we're just talking, right? And in a way, there's an air of, I, I, I can't, it's impossible to describe that nothing is serious. Nothing really is serious. Nothing really, really. And sometimes I, I find now that I've got into conversations and I might just go, rah, 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 rah. whatever, some hot air bullshit, right? It's just something I'm saying. And then I realize, oh, fuck, I've entered into a real conversation. This is real for the other person. And I go, oh, and now they've got real facts about a real world and it's a real conversation. And, every, and now it's, kind of, it's almost like a kid just having a laugh, even though it's, I'm not having a laugh. Like I might be talking really, really a passion here. This is, sounds really, acts, feels, looks. This looks like a real human being. Looks serious, talking and everything. 
I was only, I, I, okay, whatever. I didn't really mean the word, but I was saying there. Yeah. Sorry, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. yeah, it's like it's, yeah, I, exactly. It's, oh, I, I sounded like I had an opinion then, and now I'm talking about this, and they've got an opinion, but I don't really care about my opinion. <laughs> That's exact. That's it. That's it. I don't really care now. So, oh fuck, what do I do now? Oh shit! Do I just go? Yeah. I know you're really pent up there now. Yeah. I know you were, and you're, and I, and I'm sorry. I sh maybe I should. Say, oh, sorry. I didn't mean a word of what I said there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes my opinions will slip out onto a page, you know, onto a Facebook page. Sometimes, or or a, or a reply. And uh, not all of them get through because I will uh, delete them. I literally, it's like, <laughs> I, I just don't care enough to, to yeah. say that. <laughs> I don't mean that. I didn't mean that. That's what I do that. I'd write something up. I come back to an hour or two later and went, what? what? Yeah. No, sorry. I've no yeah. conviction behind that now whatsoever. No, none at all. And it's <laughs> almost like I don't even want to talk about it, really. I don't even no. know why I replied. <laughs> no. <it's> <laughs> <laughs> That's so, that's so the case. Fucking hell. I'm going to get yeah. myself into trouble because of it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just, just too quick. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> and then come back and go, no, yeah. no. I don't care about, about what I was talking about there and that. But I know it seems like I do. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 I was chatting to somebody the other day about um, about this about this space. How much more space there seems to be now, um, and how I don't know how it's I don't know how this is different, but I can be emotions, especially or feelings or other people talking. There just seems to be so much more space for 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 everything maybe distance could be could be said before everything felt so close so if there were emotions they they sort of became everything and now they appear and they're just much more you could say beautiful but that sounds a bit you know but they're sort of it seems like it seems like nothing is running the show anymore if that makes any sense so all oh, of the, yeah. everything that's appearing isn't sort of running the show and there's there's this sort of distance that seems it sounds as if someone is distant but it's not like that it's more like there's this emptiness and then there's this everything going on i was talking to tim i'm, I'm really blabbering now but i was talking to tim the other day tim Cliss, about I mentioned uh, about looking in the mirror. So I, looking in the mirror used to be so obvious that what I was seeing was what was looking. There was a real sense of that. What was in the mirror and it reflected was, was this sort of, now it feels like when I look in the mirror, there's this reflection looking back at this sort of blankness. Oh. It's... Um, it's trippy. It's just, it's just <laughs> blank. It feels a bit, it feels a bit trippy. It's not like an experience. It's not like a trippy experience, but the feeling of it is a, is a bit, it's a bit trippy, but it also feels nice. It feels relaxing. Yeah. I, yeah. I, was, I, was looking at I mean, maybe, downstairs. maybe that, maybe that will settle down, but it very much feels like that all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Tim is a nice dude. Ah, I love Tim. Yeah. He's hilarious. We laugh so much. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, he was one of the he was he was um it's really handy get, getting to know Tim because we go to Tony's Tony, Tony Parson meetings um and we'd nip outside for a cigarette. You know, and stuff the odd roll up. I used to like smoking roll ups, and I'd chat to Tim about non duality. And th those moments were way more ah, oh, insightful is the wrong word, but just more 
felt it cleared up sort of conceptual ideas about things and beliefs about things and you know being able to talk about it in a more casual way because I was never was never I couldn't stand up in a meeting and ask a question I might but rarely so being able to be opportunity to talk about ideas and things and concepts and consciousness and awareness what is all that stuff and it really sort of it, it, it was like beliefs about things just fell away and just sort of some, something would end and yeah which at first was so confusing I don't know whether, whether it was for you the idea of you know the witness or what's that or you know the, the ideas that you first have when you start to think about this. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I can remember things like witness, and I remember just thinking, uh, here, this, uh, yeah, I just remember thinking, where do you end with the witness? Like, this is, this is, this is eternity, another, another fucking, yeah, another spiraling rabbit hole. The witness, the witness, the witness of the witness. The, the witness. Something. Uh, the higher <laughs> self. It's funny, the yeah. higher self, the lower self, the middle self. I, I, yeah. I wrote um, this idea of, um, I wanted to come up with a punchline, but the joke was um, consciousness, awareness, the spirit, the soul, the upper, uh, the big self, the ego, and blah, 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 all went into a bar. That, that, that's it. That's the joke. I, 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 I thought it was a punchline, but no, that is, that's the joke, because like, yeah. so, do we not, yeah. is it not, uh, what, we, what is the word you're looking for then, for, mm. that you finally will have na nailed this, mm. is it this, all right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, that, yeah. that little, that little, but I think the one-on-one, -on -one, I used to meet with Kenneth, and chat with Kenneth, and, um, uh, I think all through the years, I'm sure I've said this a few times now, but in a way that was the love, the, I was desperate for something, you know, some way in through the back door to, to really get this. And the message, you know, it's always the same. It was so, it never, never really changed at all. In all the years, I um, was friends with them, and we'd meet up, we'd have pints, and act the card. And the, the message was just always, well, "That's what's happening, Frank. Then that's that's what you're saying. Then that's what you're saying. You know, never any attempt to change, or you're nearly there, Frank. Or you know, mm. that's in a way." That's the closest I would have if I was describing what love is, I could describe it, not a personal love, but uh, you know that, just that, uh, oh, here we are, buddy. Mm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. For me, you could say, I could say it's that feeling of that emptiness that isn't, em that isn't emptiness, it isn't nothing, it's not even there. You could say it's imagined, but it's not imagined because it feels in its unrealness it feels real but it's not real i would say that can feel like it's embracing everything well like paul morgan summers talks about it's like everything is saturated with it but it's not it and it also it also tends to put the emphasis on that nothing but there is also this everything everything is also it it's every, the everything and the nothing aren't divisible they're not mm. the same thing but they're not two things that's like they're not one thing but they kind of are not two is the best and that that to me that feels like i could describe it as love but not as often as everyone else does. I would mostly say it's sort of neutral. Mm -hmm. It's neutral, it's sort of blank. And and, and, and it, there's a sort of story that comes in, a bit of a romantic story that it feels like love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, even love dies, really. Mm. You know, that dies too. Yeah. 
And then there is only, if you wanted to be romantic, you could say when love dies, then there's only love. But that's, that's just being romantic, yeah. <laughs> which I have to say within words. You know, when, when everything dies, that's what's left. But that's yeah. making it a thing and it's too personal of a word. But yeah. there is nothing left. So then somehow still, look. Yeah, but then Woo! here we are. Yeah, here yeah. we are talking to each other. <laughs> I mean, that's just amazing. And that's become more amazing that, the, the, you know, like Michael Markham talks about reaching out to each, to, to, to apparently to each other, uh, making noises uh, and talking about all this. Yeah, um, pa apparently, re apparently relating, apparently talking. Apparent, apparently yeah. relating, yeah. Talking yeah. about things that we find beautiful or talking about music and, and you know, and, Without, without uh, apparently us, it would, it, well, I don't know, it would just be, yeah. Yeah, we're, well, Michael, Michael says something like, we're the jewel of the universe or something like that, doesn't he? It's yeah, very, they use, very, they use very, lovely very words. Pr very pretty, yeah. Yeah, it's very pretty. <laughs> Nancy, and it's like a love fest yeah. between Nancy and Michael. I really enjoy yeah. seeing the two of them yeah. interact and, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the, the love hearts coming in, kind of, um, I've, Nan, Nancy is a waterfall of love. And, and at ah. the same time, it's, at the same time, it's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her poetry is extraordinary. I mean, it is, like you said, it's a, it's a, it's a geezer of words, but not, it's not rubbish poetry. It's really good. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, it's, it's a pouring out, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, that's one of the reasons for Facebook is having that group, that exploding rainbows. You know, I, I do enjoy seeing Michael put up something that's just, it's one of the, he's just put up these kind of two liners and um, I, I just find them amusing or interesting going, oh yeah, yeah, kind of like that or, um, yeah. Yeah, I like those too. They're very clever. Well, clever. No, they're sort of inspired. Mm. Yeah, by nothing. Yeah. 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 And would you be, you wouldn't meet Tim much now, really, with this, you're not, are you far from him? Quite a long um, way, he's in, he's in the Fens up near Cambridgeshire. So it's a okay. two, two hours, two hour drive. I went up there um, before lockdown, uh, we went fishing. I hadn't been fishing since I was a kid. So he said, let's go fishing. So we went fishing, I loved it. And he caught a really big tench, one of the biggest he'd ever caught. So he was really pleased. And then he took me to play golf, which I'd never played. <laughs> um, uh, and apparently, I was apparently I was pretty pretty good for a beginner. So we managed. I managed to hit the ball a long way, and I, I really enjoyed that. With him and his brother Tony, uh, oh, it was lovely. And hanging out with his mum Pam, who was also great. Yeah, I'm going to go as soon as lockdown's over. I'll go up again. A bit more, bit more golf and fishing. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I haven't ever fished. Curious about it, but yeah, um, it's um, yeah, I'd forgotten how to take a hook out, so I was struggling a bit and feeling a little bit like, oh, you know, these fish must be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I'm, I'm amateur fisher. Oh, yeah. Because it, oh. because it was it was a stocked lake, so a lot of the fish are probably used to getting caught, and they're like, yeah, what is this guy doing? Just, just, just back it up and pull the hook out. It's really easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching some. I was watching Sopranos. I'm rewatching Sopranos, and there's just this scene of them all sitting by the lake smoking cigars. And the only time I've ever fished, the hook got caught in the rocks, and then, then I broke the twine, and I just said, "Fuck this!" Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
We're not doing this anymore. <laughs> what I did like about um, the fishing, just as a side note, was when I was a kid, they we used to catch fish. They had a little barb on the on the hook, so it would go in and then it wouldn't come out. Now they don't have these barbs, so the so it goes goes through the fish's uh, lip. This sounds a bit gruesome, especially if people hate fishing, but um, and you can just take it out without doing any damage. Okay. Um, so so it seems a little bit more humane. Um, it's still you know it's still completely unnecessary. <laughs> just leave Are the you... fish in the water. <laughs> I sort of kind of admire though the idea of. Uh, I admire the idea of uh, catching the fish yourself, killing it quickly, and and scaling the fish and eating the fish, yeah. deboning and, and as opposed to yeah. buying it from a big factory or and likewise with animals. I don't think I'd ever have the whatever to say shoot a deer, for example, and then kill the deer and you know do all that and then eat it. But I sort of have a kind of respect for the the whole act of doing that. You know what I mean? Mm. And and the getting to the end, and then sitting at, at the dinner, and I don't know, just the whole ritual of it. A kind of uh, as opposed to just you know going to the supermarket and buying meat, and you know, yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, although we always put those fish back, but yeah, there's something about, maybe it's because something innate in us deep down, you know, if, if, if this system collapsed, I, I don't know whether I'd survive if I couldn't go to Sainsbury's or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't you think I would, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I'd be like Tom Hanks in, um, in Castaway, you know, where he's trying to make fire and he's got big <laughs> blisters on his hands. I'd be rubbish. Yeah, I think I like to believe that I'd get out there and do the hunting and all that. <laughs> but it'd probably be Nula. <laughs> yeah. She hangs the pictures. I hung those ones. So that's oh, why they're okay. not so best. But no, she hangs the ones in the rest of the house. She's able to use the hammer and nail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh yeah so have you any plans for the rest of your day how is your days filled um so i'm quite lucky that uh, lockdown has, has been fairly easy for me um like i said my life's fairly fairly insular i go out now and again to a club that I really like in town and I see all my friends and then I come back home and I spend m more time on my own, I would say. So lockdown didn't feel like a big problem. Um, I listen to podcasts, read, you know, there's so much entertainment. Uh, I go for a run, so I get, get to go out, Zoom with friends. Um, I love photography. I uh, got really obsessed with that for, for a while, which I don't do quite so much because of lockdown. So it just feels like there's endless entertainment in that sense. Mm. So that hasn't been a problem. So today, and I don't know, I'm going to make have, some lunch. Do you, do you have to make a living? Do you, uh, do you have to no, make money? No, I'm very lucky. Mm. Yeah. So, and in, in, in a way, that's what enabled the space to for the non-duality for the last four or five years I, I'd say I crammed three or four years three years of non-duality I crammed probably would have taken me eight years <laughs> mm. <laughs> just having having all of that time you know to listen but, yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. felt like it felt a bit like that I felt I felt feel very grateful for that I'm really lucky yeah yeah mm. Yeah. What are you up to today? Well, I'm kind of like you. I kind of can um, uh, as little as possible. I mean, I, I, <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't really do. I mean, I do from time to time. I do a little bit of marketing work, and I kind of try to avoid it, and because um, I don't necessarily have to do it. 
so um, um, so the having to earn a living thing, I, I can find low. I, I don't have to do it. So I can find and get lost in doing bloody anything. And that, if, in actual fact, if I'm not doing anything, most of the time that's totally okay. Now, I might some frustration might build if I fancy wanting to do something creative or wanting to make something or output something, but that'll that'll come or won't come. I seem to have time. Um, now I'm doing a course, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing anything but the course. Um, I do a bit of marketing work, and then most of the time I just prick around. But I'm learning guitar again, finally, after all these years properly. Nice. And, um, and I'm really enjoying that. And uh, oh fuck, man, I just enjoy doing anything. I could sit. I don't. I'm not really. I'm not affected by this lockdown. And when lockdown ends, it'll be the exact same, probably. I'll just potter about and avoid bullshit as best as possible. I don't like the idea of lockdown. That's another conversation, but it doesn't, mm. I'm not financially or physically, I'm pretty kind of simplistic and routined in my behaviors. I mean, it's there's, I, I don't need a lot, if you know what I mean. I don't need, um, I uh, don't need anything really. So, mm. but yeah. no, I mean, if you took away, very, my, if you took away the few, yeah, just simple life. Try to avoid yeah. bullshit. Yeah, we 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 lead a very similar life by the sounds of it. And you have kids. I have a I have a eight year old. He's great. Love him so much. Um, he said to me the other day. He said, "Dad, he's been saying this quite a few times." He said, "Dad, why is all this here?" I said, oh, how do you mean? He said, well, why is all this here and not, not something else? Uh, I, you know, and I'd never talked to him about non duality He's way too young. So um, I said, I don't know. Right? It's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck with that one. <laughs> why are yeah. we here and not something else? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's great. I think, um, yeah, it's different. The, interesting, the characters are the seeds within certain, well, I have three, and, you know, they've obviously different characters, different um, creative uh, needs and different, just different. I mean, they couldn't be more different, really. Um, but, yeah, so when my nine-year-old is just spontaneously and naturally creative, you know, but find piece of tinfoil and find something creative about that. You know what I mean? So it's either, it can be there, but it's a kind of a curiosity to play with, to play with that. You might ignore a piece of cardboard or you might play with it, rip it up and change it into something else. And I think it's in, in, in it, or it can be in certain to make shit or want to, to look at things in different ways and look at, ask, it's either there you know, it's obviously spontaneously mm. there that kind of looking or wanting or seeking or sensitivity or curiosity at play, really. Yeah, beautiful. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to form yeah. a band, is what you're saying. Is that what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> well, you told me you had, you had a band called, uh, an idea for a band called the all wasn't it? Was the all, a a w e. The, 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 the all, yeah. yeah. I had it in my room in Manchester. I had I, I printed out the all, and yeah. I never properly learned to play guitar. So even timing, I'm relearning yeah. time. I didn't have timing. I didn't didn't know how to do anything. So I just yeah. just make up shit, and. Yeah. Um, but then I had no constraints, but I wasn't making any music, you know. But I had a, an idea for an album that was called Afraid, which I, can, I still think is a nice title. And um, but so I had all the trimmings of or the imaginations of what a band would be like. And, it, and I actually tried to get into, I think I was interviewed by the, I tried to get into the music industry um, when I went over to Manchester 
what's the guy's name? Oh, he's in Tony. Oh, the famous guy from Factory Records. Is it? Oh yeah, Tony. Um, Tony oh, Wilson. Out, Tony Wilson. He was great. I could have sworn that well, I went for an interview in a. In a it, was, it was him and some other guy in. A, there was it was in the. It was 1994, so there were, it was a small company that. So it may not have been, but he was wearing a suit, trousers, white runners, a shirt, and I'm pretty certain it was. Mm. But I was interviewed, and I really had a clue of the music industry at the time in Manchester. I'd only arrived. But I had the same ideas that you kind of described of, except you could play guitar. I couldn't. <laughs> There's one for you. And, <laughs> and it kind of helps, you know. So... Um, but yeah, that was as a teenager and in my twenties. That was it. I, to form a band was my kind of thing, and it, not, it, nothing happened with it. I ended up working in a mail order company in Manchester. Oh, okay, is that is that partly why the marketing thing ended up? Was that to do with that? You were saying about marketing earlier on, or did that? Oh well, I I ended up doing um working in a database company and then i yeah. de developed certain skills and then through yeah, that sure. I got better and better and blah 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 i set up a company yeah. then yeah. I, I sold yeah. that company and that company set you know meant i didn't yeah. have to work you know what I mean? yeah so. great yeah i saw you tinkling away on a gibson epiphone was it in 5meo i think Oh yeah, no, it was a couple hundred quid now, so it's it's not it's not a real Les Paul. Yeah, yeah. okay, it's two hundred yeah. quid. But I got one. I have one here, which is um, see that one. That's my oh, a nice it, black black beauty. Attackamine. So I'm I, I I love that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have um. This is uh, this one. This is um. An old Martin, 1973 Martin, D35, I think it is. Yeah. Uh, I think it's kind of funny now. Um, you see that uh, that grey chair that you've got there? It's pretty oh, much yeah. the, that Ikea um, little beauty. That's the Ikea one. Yeah, I have two of those in my studio here, but they're down, we brought yeah. them downstairs for... Um, there's another, there's another one over there. <laughs> there you go, yes. <laughs> there you go, yeah. <laughs> It's kind of sometimes, funny. sometimes like here, they do really, you know, now and again, they come up with a really great um, product. And those were, those are very cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're, my wife yeah. is big into interior design. So this, that mid century kind of style, mm. she, she, uh, so she'd been trying to nick them. I keep, I keep them if I'm doing the, the podcast. I, I have them here. It's, it's a uh, blank now. It's a bit messy. I'm in a, Oh but yeah, okay. Yeah. Here and here that there'd be the mm -hmm. um those chairs. chairs. But she yeah, she's trying to nick them anyway. Nick them back, but yeah. Uh, ah great. Uh, mm. Mm. There you go, dude. Yeah. All right. I better go and get some lunch. Yeah, well. me too. Yeah. yeah, nice to chat. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, likewise. Lovely to chat. Yeah. Um, so I put it out there. I don't think there's um, anything that needs to be edited or anything like that. I think, um, you know. No. I don't think I said uh, too much about your your film. So. No, I don't think okay so either. Then. Yeah. I, so I didn't give I it away. Bars, <laughs> bars, bars would be okay about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great to talk to you, dude. Yeah. Um, and uh, shall we see what happens? Yeah. See you later. Take it easy. easy. Enjoy lunch. See you. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye.
Frank. Frank, come on, man. 